Welcome back and welcome to section two, building a simple application powered by DynamoDB. Welcome to video one, modeling a user management application with DynamoDB. So what are we going to build? Well, we're going to build a system to store users' favorite training courses. I'm sure all of my training courses are your favorites, um, but what we want to do is just take this example and build an API, some Lambda functions, uh, and a backend DynamoDB to store different users' favorite training courses. So we want to create a database that can hold that information, particularly about users and their favorite training courses. And we need to store things like first name and last name, of course, email address, password for them to log in, the last login time as an epoch, a user ID, and some user preference information. A user table will store information about users and the IDs of the courses that they like, and we're going to need a second table to hold detailed information about training courses that users like. Now remember, DynamoDB doesn't support joins. So that means if we're ever going to need to run a query that retrieves data from both tables, our application is going to need to handle the logic to perform that join operation itself. So a typical microservices architecture, the table that holds information about training courses would live in another service entirely. So our application or front end client will be responsible for calling both of those services and presenting the information itself. So we need to be mindful of this fact when we design our tables and our application. So data model, we've already looked at this data model in the previous section. Uh, the partition key is going to be email address. Our sort key is going to be last login. We did this when we created a DynamoDB table from the console as well. And then our favorite courses will just be stored in an array of course IDs. And we're also going to have a course information table. Again, data model is very, very simple. The partition key or primary key is going to be course ID. So we can retrieve information about training courses by course ID. And then obviously we're going to have title, we're going to have published date, we're going to have author name, and we're going to have subject area. Now, I want to call this out again. DynamoDB is a NoSQL database, and that means that the query model is quite limited, quite simple. We can't do joins across tables. We can't do aggregations. We can't do, you know, min, max, group by, that kind of thing. All we can do is query by primary key and sort key. We can scan the table, which means basically looping over every record to find what we want. And we can apply filters and sorts. And that's really just about it. And we're going to cover this in a lot more detail in the next video. But with this data model, we're saying that in almost all use cases, and I mean more than 99% of use cases, will only access users based on their email address and will only ever access courses based on their course ID. Now, if we just go back a moment, if we decide we want to access users based on user ID, with this table model, we can't do it. If we want to find all users that are called Joe, we can't do it. DynamoDB doesn't let us do that unless we do a scan. And we'll, as we'll find out in the next video, scans are really, really bad. Now, there are a few workarounds using secondary indexes and that kind of thing. And we'll talk about the positives and negatives of that approach as well. But for now, let's just assume that we can only access users based on email address and we can only access courses by course ID. We won't be able to search by author name or publish date or anything like that. And it's really, really important. If we want to search based on other parameters, things are going to get complicated. So that's all for this video. 